Welcome back guys, it is thrift flip time. If you saw my last video, then you know that I have been gathering up a huge haul for the upcoming fall and um, holiday seasons. So I am going to be doing a fall flip for you in this video, and I'm just gonna start by cleaning up a lot of the items. I always start by removing all of the stickers and cleaning everything up really well. For these particular ones, I gave them a warm bath with some Dawn dish soap, and then I'm going to work on drying them out. I did dry them all with some paper towels, however, because they have such small holes for the vases, I can't get inside and dry them really well. So I'm just going to use my heat gun and go around a couple times and hit them with that to try to help dry out those insides to make sure that we don't cause any molding or any issues. And then I did let them air dry a little longer just to make sure that they had the time they needed to be able to move on to the next steps. Now for this first one, this was an olive oil dispenser. It's beautiful just as it is. I'm not going to touch it. I am also going to include this cork that came with it with the little olive oil bottle. I think it's very unique and a beautiful shape. And so we're just going to clean it up and call it a day. For this next one, same thing. I love this little vase so much. It's a little brass vase. It has really good weight to it and gorgeous detail. Not only just in the details on it, but the shape itself is just beautiful. So I don't want to do anything to this other than add some florals to, you know, stage it the way it needs to be. I will be pricing it with the florals included in case someone wants to take them with it. But it is gorgeous, and I'm so happy for this find. It did need some love and a really good washing, but other than that, we're going to keep it as is and just put it on the shelves like that. The next project is going to be these two vases that I found. I don't know what they're made of. I don't think they're clay, maybe a resin, but they are beautiful. I love the character on these and I love the color. So all I'm going to do is be adding a wax to the outside after I've cleaned them up really well, just to kind of give them some a little bit of dimension and pop out some of the detail in them. But then from there, um, just make sure they're sealed up and ready to go so that they can last a lot longer for the next owner. They do have all this beautiful texture, so I'm just going to be using a wax on them. I'm using the Waverly Clear Wax, and then I'm also using a metallic paint, I believe it was called Moonstone, that I think matches the color really well. However, it's not exact, so it'll give it a little bit of dimension when I put it on. You can make your own colored wax just by using clear wax and mixing in whatever color paint that you want. And it's a really good way to save money by not having to buy a full container of a wax that you might only use one time. For this wax, after it's mixed up really well, I'm going to use this nice chippy brush. This one's actually a wax brush. Apply it on just by brushing it on all over where I want it to. In this case, I'm doing the entire piece and I work in sections. I don't want this wax to completely dry on there. I want to be able to wipe most of it back off, just leaving a nice thin coat with it mostly in all of the crevices. So I'm just going to paint it on and then use some dry paper towels to kind of blot and wipe it off. Now, depending on what texture I'm wanting to leave behind, I do different things. So for this one, I'm doing more of a wiping motion, but if I didn't want as much wax to come off, it would be more of a like dabbing with the paper towel. So I'm just going to wipe it back down to the look that I am going for. And I'm going to continue to do this all over the vase, including the second vase, which is the same thing, only a smaller version, until I am happy with the look. Now I am going to show you a side by side because I know these colors are really close, just so you can kind of see what the difference is. Like you can tell it's so much more shiny now um, and it gives it a little bit more pop of color and texture and adds that metallic back. 
From there, I'm just going to be adding some florals that I had found. I picked these up um, on a thrift haul, and I am obsessed with these flowers. I don't know what they're made of because they didn't have the original tags. It's almost like maybe a faux leather, but not quite. But they're very stiff, they're very heavy, and they're very durable. Like, they are just gorgeous in every way. And I think that they're a great quality and a great match of color to go into these vases. So I just kind of cut them down and styled them with these florals to what I thought looked best. And I'm gonna call it a day on these vases as well. I am obsessed with these. If I had a place for them, these would be staying with me 100%. So you guys let me know what you think about these down in the comments below. And if you know what material this is, please let me know because I would love to get my hands on more of these types of flowers. I love the way they turned out. I think they're perfect for fall and I'm very, very happy. This next project, I found this glass, um, like jar that has a pumpkin shape and if you saw one of my previous videos from a couple weeks ago I had found miniature versions of this jar now I believe this one held dry pasta in it and I just love the shape and it has that pumpkin shape and gives me that fall feel so I picked it up and I'm just gonna have it kind of match my smaller pumpkins that I did however I'm gonna leave it empty this time so that it will um, just be up for whoever purchases it to how they want to use it. Now for the cork top there was a um, like piece of paper on top of it. I pulled that off and for this all I'm going to do is use some wire jute from Dollar Tree, wrap it around and then take that cork top because it did kind of have like a sticky residue even after washing it and add some twine to it. Now I used a thicker bit of this like rope jute stuff and I'm just going to hot glue that all around the top in a spiral pattern to just to kind of cover that sticky up but also give it a little bit more character. And then once I'm done with that, I hot glue it all the way around and when it gets close to the center to make sure everything sits flat, I just cut off the excess of the rope and then added some hot glue and kind of tucked it down inside the middle. That way nothing stands up and it's nice and flat and it looks as if it came from the factory that way. Once that was done, I didn't love the color of it. I wanted it to kind of match the cork, but also the jute twine that I'm putting around the base of it, or sorry, the top or neck of it. So I'm just using some Waverly um, antique wax that is watered down and very lightly brushing this all over the twine just to, like I said, darken it up and get the colors to match a little bit more um, and make it look a little more intentional as if it was always meant to be there. However, when I do wet this rope, it frays up quite a bit. So we do want to get rid of those and kind of clean it up. I was just going to trim it with my scissors, but that would have taken too long. So you can use a lighter for this. I do happen to have a little blowtorch that I'm going to use very carefully to kind of fray all, or get all of those frays and kind of keep them in place. So I just hit it as many times as I felt like I needed it to to clean it up and get rid of all of those fraying pieces. I added that back in and I used some of the same berry twine that I did from the jars previously, again, to kind of make them match together. Um, here's the smaller version of it right there. That way, when I set these up in my booth, I can put them together. The next one is this cute little metal truck that I picked up from my local Menards. They were on sale because they were off season. These trucks were out with their spring decor. So I got a really good um, price for it and I'm just going to take some of that same Waverly antique wax that I had out already that was watered down and I'm going to dab it all over this truck. They had some um, designed rust onto it but it wasn't enough. I wanted to really age it a bit um, without going overboard or having to do too much to it. So I just stippled that on all over the truck and got that to where I thought it looked good and I'm just going to add some florals to the back. I'm just going to use a floral block, cut it down to the size that I need and hot glue that down into the truck. And you're going to see me use my metal ruler as a cutter multiple times through here. It just does really well with this floral foam and makes my life a little easier because it's nice and long. So I use it all the time for that. 
Um, so I'm just going to clean that up and then like I said hot glue this into the back of the truck and then I'm going to begin to style it. I'm going to start off with some moss and I'm going to take that moss and just kind of put it down in the edges where you can see that there's a gap from the floral foam in the truck. I'm not worried about gluing it down. I'm just simply covering that gap up. That way, if someone did want to take this back out in the future and they started pulling the flowers and everything, they could still get down to that floral block and pop it out very easily without having to have glue everywhere. After that, I do glue the next layer of the moss in. That way it's not just falling out of the truck. And I'm not doing it in the middle. I'm just doing all of the edges because you won't see that middle floral when I'm done. This floral bundle came from Walmart, and they have some really beautiful um, fall arrangements this year. So I definitely think you should go check them out and pick them up. They have some beautiful neutrals, which I really caught my eye, and I think the colors go so well with this truck. I was very excited about this project. So I'm just taking um, that fall floral pick from, not pick, it was a bouquet, from Walmart and some others I had on hand, and I love how this truck turned out. I also had this little owl that I picked up from Michael's, um, like 50% off or something from last year, and I think he was super cute just to sit right in the middle and just add that little extra touch to this little truck. This next one is a giant pumpkin. <laughs> it's just a big metal pumpkin candle holder, so it has a little platform on the bottom so for you to set a candle. And I thought it was beautiful, and I got it at a really, really great price when I was out thrifting. So I want to be able to make a floral arrangement to go into the middle of this. I don't really want to mess with it. I don't want to paint it or anything. I love the way it looks, and that way if someone does use it for a candle, I know it's still safe for them to do so. So what I'm going to do is take one of these chip clips that I have and a floral block and I'm going to create a removable floral piece that you can put in the middle of this. So I'm just going to cut out a little divot for this to fit and hot glue it into that block. Once that's done, I'll make sure everything fits and works well, but then I'm going to start adding some fall florals. Now I will say I started out with these florals I wanted to use and I just didn't love the color, like how the colors of the flowers and the color of the actual pumpkin itself went together. It just felt off. It didn't really look right to me. So I put all of these in, got it all done, and I thought I was happy with it. Um, you see me here. I take it back out. I add some like berry picks to it because I wasn't really sure what was looking so off. But I just never loved it. I was never excited about it. And when I picked this piece up, I was super excited about it. So I knew I had to kind of start over. So I pulled all of those florals back out and rearranged it with some of the um, fall bouquet pieces that I had gotten from Walmart. Like I said, they have several different ones. And I used those to make a beautiful arrangement for this center with more neutral colors that I think matched way better. And I am super, super happy with how it looks now. Um, again, this is from Walmart and then also other different pieces of florals that I've had from over the past couple years that I think really made a huge difference on this piece. And I'm so happy that I decided to go back to the drawing board. Next, we're going to be working with more florals. So I found this beautiful fall swag, um, and I just am not in love with the white flowers that they have on it. I love those big, beautiful purple sunflowers and the leaves and things that they have on there, but I just wanted to make it a little more substantial and also change the color palette to what I see would fit better. So I just started by removing some, these white flowers that are in there, doing my best to get the full stem, if not than just the top of the flower and I'm going to use my own to kind of beef it up a little bit but also again change the color palette. I always start with kind of like a dry run so I put the flowers in without any glue or zip ties or anything um, where I want them to go just to make sure everything's going to look right after 
you know, I get all of the different flowers in there um, so that I can move things around freely as needed. And once I get the arrangement looking how I want it to, that's when I go back. With this one, I did hot glue them in because it was previously hot glued in. But for some of them, I just try to use zip ties or floral wire. That way it can be easily removed. But again, since this one was already all glued in place, I just went in with my glue gun as well and added my new additions to this beautiful swag. And then the last touch I'm going to do on this is to make a little bow. I've been really into this these just like ribbon strip bows lately. I tend to go into like phases. So when I'm into something, you're going to see me do it multiple times. So if you are an avid watcher of my channel, then you already know how to make these. But if you're new here, you're just going to take the ribbons of your choice and you're going to cut them down to the length that you want. I decide my length by holding the ribbon up to my piece to kind of get an idea of how big I want it to be. And then I cut down two strips of each. And from there, you can change the width if you need to. So on these two pieces you see me cutting here, I didn't want the wire. And I also wanted them to be um, not as wide as they are. So I cut the wire off, but instead of cutting right along it, I take off a little bit of that fabric too. That way they're not as wide and you can see the orange color underneath. So I did that with both pieces and then um, sometimes I add like just a one piece over top or I do um, more of like a... I don't know, like sometimes just a jute bow to add on top just to give it some different textures. But for this one, I'm just going to be taking all of these different stri or sorry strips and cutting from the outer corner. I fold it in half at the tip from the outer corner up to the center just to give it a little more detail on the tails. And then I'm also going to be using some of the wire that I had cut off from if you see the green laying there. I used that green in another project, but I didn't want the wire. So I cut all those wires off and I keep them because they make really good additions to bows and add really good texture. I'm going to use that to tie everything together. So you just lay it down in a crossing pattern. You pinch it together in the middle and then using like a wire like I have here, a floral wire, a zip tie, even a string, um, you tie it in the middle to keep it in place and then just kind of move things around how you see fit. And then you just take that um, wire, you leave extra or string, whatever you use, you, you leave excess on the back and then you use that to tie it to whatever you need or if you don't have something you can tie it to, you just hot glue it down or however you need to attach it. I love how this one turned out. I was so excited to find this and I'm very happy with the new colors. I feel like it screams fall a lot more than before. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. Next, we're going to be working on this little sign. You can't really tell in this video, but the original sign had a lot of scratches, dinks, and it was really beat up. So I'm just using some of this greenish chalk paint to paint over top of it so that I can make it into a new fresh sign. I did two coats of this paint, and then I was going to add on some fall lettering. This was actually from a project I did last year, so I have this and it's just easy to do. You can go onto your computer, choose your fonts, and then print out whatever wording to the sizing that you need and use some carbon paper to trace it on. This one happened to fit this perfectly, so I just reused it and put my carbon paper down with the black side down and then traced it with a pencil to transfer it onto the sign. From there, you're able to just paint it um, or color it in with paint markers or whatever you want to do, but it's a great way if you don't have a Cricut or any other means to do it to get a fun sign with different fonts and things that you can just trace without having to have a fancy machine. So I'm just going to be taking this gray chalk paint and doing my hello in it, and I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing. Um, you, 
you've seen people paint before. So I just take my time and I do like doing this because I think it's a bit therapeutic just to slow down sometimes and really take your time and put your focus on to a project like this. So again, I just take that gray paint and color that whole word in. And then for the fall word, I wanted to have a different color. So I did use the pumpkin orange from Waverly. Um, it's also a chalk paint and I colored it in with that. And then to kind of make it all fit together, I took that same gray and I outlined fall. One, to kind of clean up my lines, but two, to make it pop off of that, um, the back a lot more. And then I wanted to distress it a bit. So I took that same gray and I watered it down heavily and then kind of used it to distress around the edges of the sign and then also paint the sides of all of it to kind of give it a frame. And then once I was done with that, I did um, kind of like a light brushing of that all over the front of it just to kind of make it look distressed and not as brand new because I feel like the distressed kind of gives it more of like a dreary fall look to it. Just to seal everything in, I used my polycrylic and just painted over it, gave it a good coat to know that it's not going to come back off. And there you have it, a very simple sign. You can use the same technique to make so many different designs for images. You know, you could print out a pumpkin and trace it and paint it. Um, it just opens up a lot of possibilities that you may not have had before. And in the background, you can see a lantern. I didn't show you on here, but all I did was cut the wire off the side of this beautiful ribbon and tie it around because I love this lantern by itself but it just needed a little something so that's all I did with it just to give it a little more character and we are all done so if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you guys in the next one